I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious developers just like you and me. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare offers creative classes designed for real life in all circumstances that come with it. These lessons can help you stay inspired, express yourself, and introduce you to a community of millions, especially with the uncertain times that we're all living in today. Skillshare is a perfect way for you to brush up on technical skills that you can use to secure your future as aspiring developer. One of the classes that I'm particularly interested in is the hand coding your first website HTML and CSS basics original by Rich Armstrong. And I think this is perfect for building that basic foundation that you need to help you move on to JavaScript and building your own websites on your own. The first 1000 people to click on the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Once again, thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and I hope you all enjoy the rest of this video. Yo, 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 what is up everyone? Welcome to another video on the channel. It is really good to see every single one of you. I not only uploaded one video in May and I sincerely apologize for that. May has been insanely busy. To be honest, June is even that much more busy, but I'm literally making sure out of my busy schedule to literally save space and time just to make content for every single one of you. But anyway, if you're here, I wanna thank you for joining. By the way, if you can, to help me get my content out there to even that much more people, I'd appreciate if you can go ahead and leave a like on this button. And out of all of these steps that I'll be talking about in today's topic, I'll leave a timestamp for everyone down below to make sure that you can just go to the points you want to listen to. Anyway, here we go. So today what I want to talk about are the five signs that show that you have what it takes to become a web developer in the industry today. I'm not gonna lie, it is, it's honestly insane realizing that I've been in the industry for close to five years. I'm about to hit my five year mark, everyone, in two months. I can't believe that, five years, half of a decade, and I still feel like I'm just growing in this industry. But now that I have about five years in this industry, I generally feel like I'm qualified to talk about these topics. After all the jobs that I've had, after being laid off, after quitting, after dealing with toxic managers. For example, I don't even have a CS degree. And there have been people who have talked down to me simply because of that. It's sad, but you know what? The tech industry in general, there are people like that. But anyway, these are the signs that I generally believe that if you have not all, but at least some of these signs, you have what it takes to be a developer. Now please note that these signs are not black and white. Just because you have one of these signs, does not mean that you can't do it. Just because, maybe because you don't have all of these signs doesn't mean it's not for you because I'll tell you this, all of this was not me right off the bat. It's something I had to learn throughout the last couple of years. So let's get into it right now. Sign number one is you are a problem solver. To be honest, I think that is the first topic that comes to mind. When you think of a developer, what is it that makes us so valuable? I mean, you have to think about it. Why are people in the industry, not just the tech industry, but in particular careers paid so well? It's because they're problem solvers. When you look at a doctor, what can doctors do? They solve your sickness. They should be able to do that. If you break an arm, if you need surgery, if you have a heart problem, what do they do? They can fix that, hopefully potentially fix that problem. That's why they're paid so well. Another industry you can think about is like, let's say lawyers. Lawyers are paid so well, why? Because if you have a problem with the law or someone's suing you or you're trying to sue someone, you need someone that could bring you that much value to help you win in that case. That's what they're paid to walk. In the United States, why are web developers, software engineers, and etc. paid among the highest in the USA? It's because we solve problems and that's honestly one of the most, if not it is the most important skill or ability or sign that you have to show that you can be a developer. If you have a problem, are you one of the people that give up or do you actually try to find a solution to it? Even prior, to be honest, even prior to being a developer, I loved facing problems. I didn't love it, but I took it on. When there was a problem, I knew there was a way around it. I knew there was a solution. Well, among my friends, before I moved away here to Nashville, my friends would tell me, it's kind of crazy when Chris is going through a stressful situation, they would say, you can't even tell he's stressed out, he's just so calm, and he always fixes the problem right on time. Actually, <laughs> this was before being a developer. But you know what's interesting though, even though I like problem solving, what's interesting is the fact that even as a developer, within my first three years in engineering, I felt like I was the worst problem solver in every team I was. On. The first three years. Another interesting point is that when I was speaking with my boss right now, my manager, 
here at New Relic. When he asked me one of the first traits you think every person needs to have to be a developer, I said problem solver, and I said if someone's not born with it, I don't think they can do it. And he told me, Chris, don't you think someone can actually learn that skill? Do you think everyone's born with problem solving skills, or do people have to encounter multiple problems over and over and over again and able to learn how to fix things, right? And it's true because that was me. My first three years, even though I loved solving problems, in this industry, when it came to like solving bugs, when it came to just trying to fix things. I think number one, it was mainly because of imposter syndrome, but I, I felt like I had such a hard time solving bugs. And it's also because I'm a self-taught developer, and it's also because I didn't have that much experience. My first two years as a developer, I wasn't able to do everything. No one was training me, no one was mentoring me at my first job. It was me learning on my own the entire time. There are people who would answer my questions here and there, but there wasn't really a mentoring system to help me be as good as I am now. Does that make sense? But just because you're not a problem solver right off the bat does not mean you can do it. All right, let's go to number two. So sign number two, which is also very important, I would say is that you work smarter, you don't necessarily work harder. And what I mean by that is that there are two types of people in the world where you work really hard on something, but it's not really taking you anywhere or it's taking you the longer route. It's taking you much longer to complete something compared to someone who probably would figure out a way to do that task even that much more faster. So the people who just like to work harder, but there are also people who like to work smarter. Just because you're working smarter does not technically mean you're working harder, right? And what I mean by this, for me, I run two different companies. I'm about to, I'm building a third one right now. I'm potentially going to a fourth company. I'm also a developer relations engineer for New Relic. I am extremely busy. And I mean, when I say busy, there are times, multiple times throughout the week where I'll have nine to 10 meetings. Uh, meetings at 1 a.m., 8 a.m., 10 p.m., etc. I'm meeting with people, I'm running a company from a well development company, and at the same time, I'm building my desk accessory company, and now I'm building a mentoring platform. And aside from that, I'm also building a mining cryptocurrency business as well, and, and all of these things, and working with NFTs as well. Oh my gosh, it's so much work to do. So instead of me thinking that I need to do all the work, working 20 hour days, seven days a week, I had to work smarter. Meaning, what I did is instead, I hired more people. I hired a video editor to edit my videos now. I hired a designer to help me make things look more pretty and do my thumbnails now so I don't have to do them and spend two hours on that when I can just work on other things. I also, now for my job, I have to write a lot of blogs and I'm building my own blog library, Chris Sean, personal website that'll go live very soon. But instead of me writing 400, 500 blogs in a year, I'm hiring someone to do that for me where I speak to a microphone, record an audio, my copywriter, my content writer hears that and he converts that into a blog. I'm also hiring a salesperson to help me get clients for each of my companies. Now, I am the main salesperson, but it, it helps to have help doing that. So instead of me working extremely hard, right? Instead of me putting all this time and effort, I divided my work to other stuff. So at the end of the day, instead of me working 80 hours a week trying to get all this work done, it's really important for me to have a life work life balance now more than anything and me to be able to work on the creative part of creating content. So now instead of doing all that work, I have people helping me. So rather than working harder, work smarter. That's for my situation. Maybe you're in a different situation as well where you're someone who tries to figure out how to make your life easier. Or you're the kind of person where you're trying to figure out how to get things done faster or instead of doing the same thing over and over again, how can you find a way to automate that? I think that's a really important sign that you can become a developer because to be honest, the laziest developers out there, I generally believe could be one of the best developers out there because we hate repeating ourselves all the time. Okay, so let's go to sign number three, everyone. So sign number three is this, that you don't give up easily or you don't give up at all. That you have one of the personalities where if you want something, you're a go-getter, you'll do whatever it takes to get there. If there's something that is really difficult, Rather than giving up, which is always the easiest thing to do, right? Giving up is always easier, but your persistence is what? Always gonna be harder, right? So when it comes to this, a sign that you can become a developer in this industry really is that you don't give up. Because why is it so important? When it comes to the tech industry, when they're given these different tasks and building things, what is the one thing that you will always encounter pretty much on a daily basis is that you will be given tasks. You're given bugs, you're given projects, tickets that you've never encountered before. Well, guess what? That'll be hard as hell. You know what's really discouraging? When I was given a ticket, it took me two to three hours to complete. When <laughs> my boss did it in front of me on a different, a different occasion and he completed it in 10 minutes, right? And it's not that I just suck. It's just that he has more experience than me and he also had to go through that problem first. When he first encountered this particular problem, he couldn't do it right away. But he, there's a reason he's able to do it quickly because he didn't give up. As a developer, you can't give up when you are given these difficult things. We are problem solvers. They're not easy to fix. Problems are never easy to fix. That's why we're paid so well. So having that mentality that you 
don't give up easily is really important because I'm gonna tell you this, even when you get your first job as a developer, you will encounter imposter syndrome making you, making you feel that you should give up on a daily basis. Don't let that win, you win. So number four is that you are able to adapt to different situations. Again, just to go off what I last talked about, you will almost never, unless you're working in a very, I guess you could say boring tech jobs, and there are boring tech jobs out there, unless you're encountering the same problem over and over again, to be honest, you rarely encounter the same problem. When it comes to things just like this, what's very important is that you are adaptable. To be honest, there might be times when you have to work longer hours. To be honest, there might be a time when you should have finished a project in one week and now you're on the end of the week, it's a Friday, you're not able to complete that project yet and you might have to stay a little longer or not even just that. Maybe there's a new customer, a new client that your company just picked up and now it requires you to work in an entirely different language you never worked on. Maybe you've been working on jQuery your whole life and then boom, Vue.js comes up or boom, Svelte.js, React.js comes up and now you gotta work in these libraries you never worked on. Or let's say just for example, now you gotta learn backend and you gotta learn it in a matter of two weeks. Adaptable, being able to adjust to any situation is very important as a developer. And it's something that all of us need to be able to have. Last but not least, I think one of the most important signs, right, that you can be a developer is that to be honest, and this won't happen right away, is that you like coding. I mean, if you don't like coding, I'll tell you this, being an engineer in this industry will not be fun because you'll be hammering on a keyboard eight hours a day, nonstop, you'll be in meetings, you'll have to encounter problems, you'll be working with really tight deadlines, you'll be working with difficult people here and there. Sometimes you might have to talk to customers and you have to travel to places you don't wanna to travel to and all of these things happen for those who work in this industry as engineers. These things will happen. But if you love what you do, at the end of the day, it helps. I mean, if you're passionate about this, this job will become even that much more easy. And again, everyone, please know, it pays well. And maybe because it pays well, that's why you're passionate about it. One year ago, I was working in a job where I felt completely burned out. One year ago, I felt like this is a dead end job. I won't get a raise. This is the end of my career. I was making 70K a year. I'm not trying to rhyme right here, okay? I was making 70K a year. This was 12 months ago. Now, I'm making north of $220,000 a year. Now, I am heading towards my fifth year. I'm still in my fourth year as a developer, heading into five years. But in the span of one year, simply because I got laid off and took risks, started my own businesses, and then got a job at a really big company, I've been able to more than double. Is that more than triple? Hold on, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. No, hold on, I gotta do this math. This is crazy. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. In the span of one year, I've been able to more than triple my income from my mid-level position as a developer. This industry pays well. And I'm not going to lie because I get paid really well. I'm very passionate about it. But one thing to note everyone was that I was not always passionate as a developer. That when I first learned code, it took me three to four months to actually start enjoying it and loving it. And there are times I got burned out when I didn't even want to code for a couple months. I wouldn't learn code outside of work for half a year because I got burned out and I was exhausted and got tired of it. But then that love for code came back. This will happen. You don't always have to love it, but being passionate about it will help a lot. Anyway, those are my signs. If y'all have any other comments, all right? If you have any other suggestions of what signs someone should have or should look for to show that they could become a developer, please let me know, leave a comment below. And by the way, I wanna let every single one of you know that I am a full-time streamer now. Yes, I am paid to be a full-time streamer. I am on Twitch four times a week. I'll leave this link in the description below. Sign up for Twitch. And I'm even speaking at my first conference at Future Stack at New Relic, my first conference. Please make sure I don't speak at an empty Zoom call and sign up below. I love you all. This is Chris Sean, this is Lifehold Developer, and I'm out. Peace.